Hello everyone and welcome. I am so excited to have Karen Alsup with us today. She's a fantastic photographer and artist and I love her work. I know you're going to just enjoy every minute of this because I know I will. I'm really excited about this, Karen. So welcome uh, to ViewBug and you're going to be doing a contest for us called Storytelling and today we're going to look at some of your beautiful images. You're going to give us a little background uh, behind these images, what you're looking for in a winning image so that the people that are entering the contest uh, we'll also get some inspiration and a little bit of educational tips from you. So thanks so much yes. for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laurie, for having me. I'm very excited to be on ViewBug and to be looking um, to be judging this competition. It, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see all the entries that come in. Yeah, it's going to be lots of fun. Well, Karen, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, how did you get started in doing this composite work? Wow. Well, I've been a photographer since I was in my teens. So my grandfather was a photographer and he got me into it and I had a dark room and I had black and white film and I, I did all of that. But I also, you know, back then Photoshop was in, in its infancy and um, I started playing with it way back when there wasn't even layers. And um, I've always enjoyed this side of things. I, I started I started a graphic design business and a photography business in 2001 and kind of just progressed. But I took the road that many people take with photography at that point and um, focused on weddings and portraits. And I, I was doing that for many, many years. It actually wasn't until last year that I started doing this intense compositing work um, and I, I mean I'm, obviously I have some skills from from all those years but I just got so involved in creating and taking lots of different photos and bringing them together to tell a story and I went with I went for it with everything that I had and I'm just absolutely loving the journey at the moment that's fantastic and only a year but like you said it's like yeah. you know culmination of many years before that and it just kind of all comes together yeah. I love that when that happens yes. so that's fantastic yes <laughs> yes yeah it's, it's like all my uh, all the things that I love have come together in in this type of work so yeah I love it you, you can see it. that you can see that in this work <laughs> well we're going to take a look at some of her images this one Karen I'm really excited to hear some background <laughs> about this because uh, as you know I'm a I love uh, photographing wildlife and animals at the zoo yes. so tell yes. us a little bit about this particular image well, I really wanted to do something a little bit quirky with this. Um, I, all of these photos were photographed at a zoo, but I wanted to bring the animals out of the zoo into an environment that was more human-like, so a little bit uh, like the animals are actually people. Um, so I just decided to, um, I don't know even where I got the idea of them driving in a bus in a combi van, but I had to track down the combi van and I found someone that was selling one that let me take photos of it. And, you know, I went and photographed the scene and pulled different elements out. So you can see the shops um, were photographed at a different location to the road and then the combi van at a different location. and and then bringing all the animals together. And of course, I think my favorite part of this is the zebra crossing. And I don't even know if they call them that over in the US, but do <laughs> no. they? Um, we call, okay, because I didn't know whether that was coming across, because we call those crossings a zebra crossing in Australia, hence the zebra crossing. So <laughs> That's great. I wasn't sure if that was communicated. But um, yeah, I just, I, I love the, the gorilla and on the seat there. It just looks like he's meant to be there. and. Um, yeah, I had lots and lots of fun putting this one together. And you even have a little bird up there. I didn't even notice that before, yes. but there's a little... And a uh, koala uh, in the tree. He's sort oh, of getting, yeah. See, I, I, love, I love images like this. You know, where you, <laughs> you discover, you know, right away you see some of the main objects, but when you start looking around yep. and it just, oh, I love it. So this is fantastic. A good storytelling image, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's take a look at your next one. And this is a new one that you just put together and I love this one as well yeah. so tell us the yeah. story behind this one okay well with this one I um, I actually created it uh, initially the idea was I wanted to show people through a tutorial how to cut around animals hair using Photoshop brushes so this was sort of I needed to come up with an image that allowed me to do that and to showcase that um, but I was passing this um, building scene and I just thought wow that could look really good in an image so I, I went in and I photographed and I and I got lots of different elements so uh, the truck there is a separate shot to the to the scene and I put them all together and then I just started thinking of 
I wanted to put animals in there, but I didn't really have the idea initially. So sometimes I come up with an idea and I know exactly what it is that I want to want to do. And other times it just kind of comes into play after a while. So one element adds on to another element. So when I started thinking of putting Australian animals in here and started looking up information about, okay, we've got a lot of kangaroos jumping around here and it seems like they're not endangered or there's no issues with you know, the kangaroos' uh, habitats. But in fact, the more uh, building that goes on, the, the less space they have. And I just started looking into the long-term effects of um, basically us taking over their habitats. And it kind of came into creating an image that showcased that in a really dynamic way. So a really obvious way that, wow, all of a sudden these animals don't have a place to live. So that's that's how it came, came to play. And, and yeah, I brought it all together from animals, uh, photos that I'd taken at, at a farm mostly. So, yeah. <laughs> that's great. You know, your colors are very muted and it kind of sets the tone for the story, yeah. which is Save Our Habitat. And I love that about this as well. Really Yes, nice. yeah. And I love, I love bringing light into an image as well. I'm very much, just in terms of the look of images, I love backlight. So that just grabs me. Um, I've always loved that in, in all of my photography. So bringing that into it too. Okay, this is beautiful. Wow. <laughs> okay, this there's, there's one, a yeah. lot going on here. So, okay, uh, we're ready. Okay, well, this this one I really wanted to challenge myself. I always want to challenge myself. Every image that I create, I want to learn something new. You never stop learning, um, particularly with this sort of work. There's just so much that you can do. So, I wanted to challenge myself and bring lots of elements into the one. So I had to photograph the horses separately. Actually, the horses are made up of horse, horses being ridden, uh, as well as horses standing still, as well as mouse ears. So I had to photograph mice. Um, I, the goose I had to follow around and, and photograph that. Uh, I had the lizard come into the studio. I had the pumpkin come into the studio. Someone bought it. I had the um, the carriage was in the city. It was it was a dreary day. It was raining and it was parked next to a bus stop. So I had to use a wide angle lens to capture the carriage. Whereas with um, the horses, I needed to use my 70 to 200 lens to to stay well back because they were running around. It would have been unsafe for me to shoot that on a 16 mil lens. Um, and then, and then the subject, obviously the background. I, I went and photographed that separately too, and the sky, and our model here. Uh, I rigged up a flying machine in my studio <laughs> and had her hanging in it. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to get the real feel of flying. I wanted her to feel like she was kind of flying along behind. So we did that, and then photographed the shoes separately. And yeah, there's heaps of uh, work that's gone into it, but it was a whole lot of fun putting it together. So yeah, I, I wanted to maybe share with uh, people that are looking at doing this sort of thing. A lot of the time uh, you, you might get told that you need to photograph every element with the same lens so that it matches. And that's actually a good principle. Uh, it does work quite well if you photograph everything with the same lens length and the same aperture to match everything up, but this image was no nothing like that. Um, you know, my, I think I used about four different lenses to bring this together, and it's really about, I think, using your eye, making sure it match, matches. Uh, depth of field needs to be right, so having everything in focus from front to back so that it merges together. Um, but yeah, just using your creativity, and once you know the rules, you can break them. So kind of the rules of, Photographing everything in the same same lens length, you can break that if you know what you need to achieve. Right. Yeah. Now, Karen, let me ask you, how do you feel about using stock images versus photographing everything yourself? Do you have a uh, how do you feel yes? About that? I have I have weird feelings about that. I guess um, there are times where I've used stock, and uh, there's times where that is important. I think you know if it's to save time and you can't. There's a bee image that um, that I did. It's a it's a model sitting in a forest and there's bees, and it's the middle of winter here. And she we, we weren't going to be able to get out and photograph bees, so I had to purchase stock of bees and made that work. But 
Um, I prefer to use all my own work. I like the feeling of it being all my own work and also there's certain competitions that you can't enter if you've used stock. So I try and use my own work wherever I can. Yeah. Oh, and also I think you can match it up better. So if, you, if you're photographing it, you have full control over the situation. So that helps too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I have not seen this one before. And, uh, this ah, is delightful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this one I um, I did on a trip up to Queensland, and uh, the you know the the different elements again. I photographed it all up there, so the castle was in one place, but the background and the scene was was in another place in Queensland. It was just a beautiful landscape um, that we we drove past, and then the um, the models we photographed on location at the castle, um, but. Uh, I needed to cut them out using the pen tool. So often I will photograph my models in studio, use a green screen lighting, and it just makes it easier to extract them. Um, but with this, I didn't have that. I was away, so I had to do it manually, basically. Um, and the dragon uh, is made up of lots of different animals and all merged together. So you've got a giraffe in there, a bull, a bat, all sorts of things. So I wanted to be really creative with that <laughs> track and make, make it my own. Yeah. You'd never know that that was made up of uh, all kinds of different animals. So <laughs> that's really interesting to know. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's stop for a second because I have to say, Karen, when I first saw this image, it was like, oh my gosh, I love this. And there's so much that I love about it from the expression. I think that's your daughter her little face, it is. that the yeah. dog with the goggles in the back and they just, you know, there's that, the wonderful gesture and expression and I just, and her red, you know, everything about this I love. <laughs> it's yeah. one of my absolute favorites <laughs> of all time and I uh, love to hear a little background on this one. Oh, thank you. This, this one, look, this one was, is still my favorite. I, I love it because of the expression it's obviously my daughter and my dog as well, which makes it really special. It just went front cover on a major Australian magazine, Better Photography, which is very exciting for me to have that on there. Um, but yeah, just the, the idea of it, um, I just had this image in my head and I, so I went about in trying to work out how to do it. So um, yeah, I, I went to a uh, tour at an airfield and photographed the plane there. They put it in the position that I wanted it. Um, they moved it around for me so I could get the sunlight in the right spot. That, that's, wow. that's the real sun that was there at the time, the little sun flare there. Um, and then I photographed um, my daughter and our dog outside. I used a strobe to replicate where the sun would be coming from and I had my daughter leaning over a chair and my husband was trying to get her to get that emotion and that expression so he was the one that was encouraging her to go ah! <laughs> and to, to create that um, and then the dog, the dog was like how do we get a dog looking like it's you know flying in an aeroplane so and he was probably about six months old at the time, so crazy, crazy, running around like crazy. So I just had him jumping off like a, a higher ledge over and over again uh, and again positioned the strobe where I need it and just kept photographing him and got this shot of him with his tongue hanging out, just flying along in the air and um, and put that in. And we, we held the ears up and things like that to add to that. So yeah, that's kind of how it was put together. And then of course the clouds were some other shots as well. Yeah. Just delightful. I love it. <laughs> and uh, this is little Pinocchio. Or yeah, this or, yeah. <laughs> Geppetto on Pinocchio's Geppetto's workshop. This one is pretty special to me as well um, because this is my dad and this is my son. And I really wanted to have an image of the both of them because my son really loves his pa and my pa's, although he's say he doesn't want to get dressed up and be in my photos. He's usually more than willing once I talk to him about it. And um, so I just had this idea for Geppetto's workshop because he has the moustache and he looked like Geppetto. So I started Pinteresting and looking up all of the images of Geppetto and Pinocchio. And so to bring this together, I found that uh, background scene and I went there and photographed that and the light that was coming through the back was just amazing and I've added to that to bring it out. Um, and then in the studio, we photographed 
Pinocchio, that Pinocchio was, it's, it's like worth about a grand, <laughs> this puppet. Yeah, um, and the actual Geppetto's workshop were kind enough to um, release it to me and I got it back to them. Um, but they, uh, yeah, so I photographed Pinocchio and then uh, uh, to photograph my son in that position, he wasn't, he wasn't participating well. <laughs> um, when we tried to do it, it was nap time. So, you know, it looks like all my images come together really seamlessly and, you know, there's, it, that it just works. But sometimes the behind the scenes are nothing like what you see the end result. So we got him back in the studio the next day and I just sort of followed him, him around and made sure the light was in the right place and, and got him kind of with that look looking up. And, and my dad there, um, yeah, got him acting and holding up the strings and, yeah, got him to express himself so that, yeah, it, it all came together. So lots of fun creating, <laughs> lots of fun. Yeah, you'd never know that uh, <laughs> that he wasn't uh, behaving well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he looks like a little angel. <laughs> he does. He is not. <laughs> uh, so this must be your, your son and your daughter as well? In the it, Oh, interestingly, it was. Um, but okay. <laughs> my original version of this uh, had my son and my daughter in it. But um, because I, I actually redid this image to enter into the Victorian um, ARPP Awards, uh, and because I'd had my daughter in another image, I needed a different model mm -hmm. so that I could, you know, we have to have different models in it. So I got, I got this girl in um, to the studio to replace my daughter's spot in the image, basically. It's my, it's my son. So he's flying in the balloon with a girl he has never met. Um, <laughs> but it went really well. It was well worth uh, the extra effort to re redo this. Sometimes I come back at my images and rehash them a little bit, but I got a gold for that one and actually got five golds recently at those awards so oh, congratulations that's great <laughs> oh, and the balloon just the balloon there that's a little vintage balloon that i got from a um a local toy store so it's 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 only like this big and so photographing those different balloons in the studio and then putting them in to the scene just yeah it, I, I was pretty excited when i found those <laughs> wow. this is interesting because this particular image is really highly saturated lots of vivid colors yes. And uh, yeah. a lot of your other ones are more muted uh, with splashes yes. of color. So it's interesting to see this is a little different. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is a muted kind of dreamy, yeah. mysterious, a totally different yeah. feel and vibe. Very different. Yeah. Very different. And it actually came about very differently. So I, I'm, as I said, normally I have the idea in my mind of, of what the image is going to look like. But with this one, um, I just decided to play around a little bit. I, I pulled out some images that I'd previously taken and just started playing. So the, the model, this was a photo in, in a bunch of photos that I took for another composite. And so I, I found this one of her that I hadn't used and, and the boat in the background and um, yeah, just all of the elements, the smoky water and everything. And I just was playing with it. and. I'm glad I did because again, I got a gold for that one at the um, AIPP Awards as well. So sometimes you might go into an image not really sure where you're headed, but it, it sometimes is just fun to play. Yeah. Do you ever sketch out ideas uh, at first, at the beginning? Yeah, I sketch, but I'm so bad at drawing, really bad. And I'm embarrassed when people want to see my ideas. I try and draw them and they look terrible, even my stick figures. So yeah. <laughs> At least I know in my head what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> That's most important. That. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Okay, so tell yeah. us about this. She's falling, looks like. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is Alice down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, she's obviously just fallen down the rabbit hole. And, again, this image was a redone image of an earlier one. So when I first started doing the compositing, I had a lot to learn. I did uh, this image, but I had my daughter falling down the hole and it was complex the way that I had to shoot, uh, to, to photograph her because um, there's lots of different, uh, there's lots of different shots all blended together to get that falling motion. It's not just in one shot. So arms up in the air, legs up in the air, hair down. So, and moving the lighting and the flow of the material and the hair to match. So when I first did it, it was okay, but I just was never happy with it, but I knew it had potential. Um, so I brought another model into the studio, again, just prior to those awards 
to redo it and I'm just I'm so happy with the, the end result of this one. I just was able to go, this is where I wanted it to be. Back when I wasn't quite sure, I've now built up the skills to, to make it work. So that's great. Yeah. I know there's a yeah. guinea fowl there. It's kind of watching Yes, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Photograph that at my favorite. I've got a little, uh, it's a farm that's not far from me and I go there quite often and just take lots of different photos and that I can use, yeah. Yeah, yeah I love the dust and the textures and you've got yes. things floating up. In yeah. The, yeah, there's a lot of action. Yeah, getting the family just out and about throwing up dust and dirt for me <laughs> and yeah, we have lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Okay, and oh, this is a little sweet image here. Yeah, yeah. This this one this one was um, it's obviously Pennington Bear, uh, and on location uh, I photographed the station master. I hadn't organised it prior, so I had to. I approached him. I just thought, you know, it'd be really nice. He's all dressed up. I was going to get someone dressed up in the studio later for that part of it, but he was all there dressed up, and I explained what I wanted to do and somehow he uh, understood a little bit of what I was explaining because often I talk to people and it, it takes a little while for them to understand what I'm doing. It sounds really strange sometimes. So he, he offered to pose um, and the way that we achieved this is he was actually bending down and talking to my daughter who was not, so this image of Paddington Bear was taken in the studio. So. I've taken a few blank images as well so that I could um, lend out the image of my daughter actually being there in person um, So, because she, she wasn't dressed as Pennington at the time. So yeah, I've done this in, in a few steps and then Pennington Bear back in studio, all dressed up. So my daughter again, um, so that she's the same height and she was dressed up, changed the colour of the jacket. I couldn't find a blue jacket. So I got a red one and I've changed that to blue. And then the bear is actually a dog. And I've, I've morphed it. Yeah, it's a dog that looks like a bear. It's like a really massive bear dogs. <laughs> and so I've, I've morphed the face so it looks more like a bear. <laughs> so yeah, always lots of fun. Lots yeah. of fun thinking about how to achieve what it is that's in my mind. Yeah. yeah. I love to, you know, your eye contact between you know, this conductor and, and Paddington. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's yeah. Really, there's a connection there and it, and you feel yeah. it. And uh, I love yeah. that about yeah. a good image. You feel the emotion and what's happening. Yeah. And yours yeah. certainly portrays that. That's really nice. Yeah. Okay. And then we got this dreamy look with the beautiful white yeah. peacock and beautiful things happening yeah. in the background. Love this was probably an image that maybe was took the longest out of all of my image to, images to create. Um, I had to make it a whole lot larger in resolution than most of my images because it's actually been printed three metres by two metres on a, on a big wall uh, that people can come up nice and close to. So the resolution needed to be very high so that all the detail was there. So to create this, it's made up of lots of different images. So all the trees, all the scene is um, lots of individual images that I've put together. Um, and yeah, the idea just kind of evolved over time. So as I was editing, I changed the look of it. So that's why it took longer than some of my other ones, just to get that feel, that dreamy feel. Um, and then having her looking up at the peacock there. So um, obviously she was photographed in the studio after I finished creating the scene. So I usually always create my background scenes first so that I know where to place the subjects. And the peacock again was at my favorite farm. So I yes. photographed <laughs> Karen, how long did this uh, image take from start to finish? Um, this one actually took about 50 hours, so much longer than my, most of my images might take between 10 to 20 hours probably on average. Uh, and it's over time, like I'll stop, I'll, I'll have a bit of a break and, and come back to it. And it, it mainly, it took that much time because I was playing with it. It was, it was like a painting, this one sort of came about like a painting, like I just kept adding to it, you know, the background, I've, I've painted in all of the uh, foliage and the subtle foliage in the background, so I've actually got a speed edit up um, that shows the start to finish all compressed into about five minutes, which is very interesting to watch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so talking about storytelling images, 
Um, yeah. This is interesting because there's things going on um, and it doesn't, you know, the reflection in the water is not reflecting exactly what's happening up above, That's which right. is really unique. Yeah. So tell yes. us about this one. Yeah, well, this this one's, um, they're a band called Stand, and the idea was to actually really portray in a storytelling way uh, what, their, what their band stands for, which is see things are now different. So the idea was to show that these musicians that are in the reflection, this is the before, the reflection is the before, and and they're, they're stuck. You know, the drummer can't get free. He's, he's got his hands tied and he's stuck there and the, and the, the violinist can't pull up her um, violin from the chains and um, the, the person, the, the guy that's writing the music, he's just, he's tearing it into pieces because he just can't get it, you know, he can't get that music out and so he's frustrated and then as, you know, it comes up into the reality of, of what's now, um, they, they're just totally free, you know, the drummer's just awesomely free, the drum's up in the air, you know, the violin's free and, and then the, the music is up in the air and, you know, it doesn't even, he's not even worried, it's just, it's just freedom in, in music basically and, um, you know, we, we, to achieve that took quite a long time in studio to photograph all of these aspects um, but yeah, I just, I love the end result, I love the, the communication of, of what this image says, you know, straight away when people look at it they can kind of see all that I think. So, yeah, that creative yeah. block that we are frustrated with yeah. and then just you know yeah. that uplifting release of yay <laughs> you know get through that yeah. that's wonderful yes <laughs> yeah exactly. okay and this is the last image we'll be looking at today and um this is humorous um yeah <laughs> so tell us about these dogs and the in this cat. Uh, so, so these, this, the dogs that I um, photographed are the same ones that I used in Paddington Bear, uh, but obviously I changed it with the Paddington Bear one. But yeah, the idea of this one was obviously I think to create a Goldilocks image, so Goldilocks in the three bears, and I really wanted to have a twist with that. So, in telling the story, I didn't want it to be that straight three bears uh, and Goldilocks. And we don't have bears in Australia, so I'm not going to be able to, I mean, I could go to the zoo and photograph the bear there, but um, I wanted that twist. So uh, I bought in, again, this was a this was what looks like was a nice peaceful scene. In reality, when I was photographing it, it was a bit chaotic. We had 40 minutes to shoot this. It was in a bed and breakfast, um, and they were cleaning, so it, it was before the next lot of people moved in. And... Um, and so my kids, these are, one, these are my kids, they, they love to model for me, but they were not behaving on the day. So the, the little baby bear is in fact, in reality, in the real shot, coming towards me crying because he just wants his mummy and he's tired. <laughs> oh, no. And my daughter lying on the bed so peacefully as a cat, she was, yeah, that took a bit of bribery, I can tell you. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, we got there. But Originally when I created this the first time, it was Goldilocks without being a cat. So it was the dogs looking over Goldilocks. And I, I started thinking about that a little bit more and realised, no, I think it, it, there's opportunity for more of a twist there. So that's when I got the cat into the studio and, um, yeah, so now it's kind of this creepy, <laughs> the, the dogs are about to get the cat sort of feel, which, yeah, I think is really cool. Yeah, so it's really cool. a little bit different. <laughs> I love your humor uh, in your images. <laughs> That's great. Just. So Karen, that was a lot of fun seeing your images and hearing the stories behind them. I uh, just absolutely love this. And I have an even bigger appreciation for your images, even more so than I did before, which is hard to believe. <laughs> but um, So as a, as a judge, uh, judging a storytelling contest, uh, can you tell us, you know, what are you looking for? Uh, what is most important? Is it the technical aspect, the artistic, the storytelling behind it, or is it a combination? Oh, look, I think it really has to be a combination. Um, if you have the storytelling, but the technical aspect is not quite there, then it, it's not going to come across as, clear, as clearly. So, um, look, I'm looking for a bit of skill in the technical aspect. Now, it doesn't have to be a composite necessarily, but creativity in the way that it's shot and, and technical skill in, in the way that it, it's composed and um, the, 
just just overall good technical skill is, is important to me. Um, but also just the story, um, you know, it could be humorous, it could be powerful, it could be sad. It, it can communicate, just that it communicates something um, and then it makes someone feel something I think is, is what I'm looking for. So, you know, some of my images might tell a really specific story like, a, you know, that the Goldilocks one. Um, but other images might be more of a feel or an emotion that it makes people feel. So like, uh, the one of my daughter in the plane with the dog, just that immediate joy that people feel when they see it and that they, they, they get that emotion themselves when they look at it. So I, I'm looking for something that evokes some kind of emotion, whichever that emotion is, you know, is up to the person that enters. But yeah, they'd be the main things that I'm looking for. Great. Well, uh, we're excited to see all the images that will be submitted to this contest. And Karen, thank you again for joining us today. It's been a real treat and a pleasure to have you here with us. At thank week. you so much. Time thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to see what people put together. Yes, it's going to be great. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>